Welcome. You're listening to the Leading Hope Podcast. My name is VJ Williams here with my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to become a better leader. If you're new, we release a new episode every Wednesday. You can remember that by uh, because it's every it's Wednesday. Wednesday. That's right. And you can also subscribe uh, at your favorite podcast platform and get that delivered automatically to your device every morning on Wednesdays. Also, share this with a friend on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Also, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts. You won't believe how that helps get this podcast in the hands of more leaders just like you. Share it with your team as well. Visit leadinghope.online to get updates and find out more about the Leading Hope community. Kevin, we continue the standalones. Today is 118. You're excited. You're I am. Excited Here we about go. We're going to say this uh, hopefully uh, with one breath. <laughs> 118, staying in leadership without becoming a sociopath. You will say it again. It's so good. Staying in leadership without becoming a sociopath. Which I know was the, the big eyes. question that everybody had on their mind this morning when you woke up yeah. and you're like, how do I stay in leadership yeah. without becoming a sociopath? <laughs> oh my goodness, there's a podcast <laughs> yeah. for this. Yeah. <laughs> Extra sponsorship on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so let me explain a little Please bit. Please do. The dilemma. <laughs> Please do. All right. So here, uh, if you, everyone in leadership, I, I believe if you've been in leadership for any period of time, you know this, to say that if you do something meaningful, it will be criticized. That's just the nature of it. It's a, it's an all of life thing. If you do anything noteworthy, newsworthy, significant in any way, you will receive criticism. I heard the other day, I'd credit this person, but I don't know who said it. It says that the price of impact is criticism. Oh, okay. We'll have that in the show notes, That's but great. we don't know who we're quoting. Okay. The price of impact is criticism. So this becomes the problem though is if you do anything significant as a leader, you will be criticized. The problem is, is that if you stay completely open, like if you're just there and you've got some people-pleasing tendencies going on, then you're just you're just going to get throttled. <laughs> like I say that seriously. Like if you're, if you're tender-hearted the whole way through, you're just going to get bruised and battered over and over again, and you're probably going to exit leadership in a hurry. Like, yeah fast because we know there's many people and you you probably know many people um you might be one of those people who went into leadership thinking the idea is that it's a significant position and you're excited and everyone's going to like you and then they didn't mm -hmm. because the price of impact is criticism and every passing comment oh man it just hurt and yeah. so if you stay completely open like that as I'm going to tell you you're just going to exit leadership as a bloody pulp like it's not <laughs> It's not going to go well. But then here's the other side, and this is the equally concerning side, is to say if you close yourself off, you're a sociopath. So here's the <laughs> definition. Ready? Sociopath is someone who has no regard for others' rights or feelings, who lacks empathy and remorse. This will lead to exploiting and manipulating others for personal gain. So the like I, I say it like this, like this becomes the hard balance is to say if you're just completely open and you want everyone to like you, you're going to get beaten up, taken advantage of and pushed off. But if you become closed, you're going to beat others up. You're going to take advantage of them and you're going to run them off. And so this somewhat becomes the dilemma of how do we stay in the middle? <laughs> how do we stay not so people pleasing that we just get throttled every single day? And how do we say not so closed off that we become a monster? Question mm. makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. So now hopefully... I'm, I'm ready for you to tell us. Hopefully now <laughs> at this point in time, staying in leadership without becoming a sociopath is making a little more sense as to why we're actually discussing it. And if I could say it is like, I've... I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a sociopath. I know. <laughs> do you believe there's a question there? Well, can I be honest with you? Yes, please I, do. I, I guarantee you there's some people who have been under my leadership who say I am. Oh, how about that? The price of impact is criticism. Yeah, there you go. And it, it becomes really hard because, like, when someone who is jaded and disgruntled and just mad levies criticism at you, it, it becomes a difficult balancing act of understanding which criticism do I receive and which do I cast off. Sure. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And it's, like, really hard because some people will say stuff, and, and I'll have times people ask me, go, did that hurt? Sometimes it does. 
and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And when I say it doesn't, sometimes people are shocked. Yeah. Because I, I've learned kind of not to be so tender hearted that you're not blasted every single time something comes your way. Yep. But then this becomes the legit concern is to go, should I be more empathetic? I know everyone. Yes, you should. But but like there's a certain amount. If you're all empathy, you can't keep leading. Right. Because the criticism will crush you yeah. over time. Well, you will be you won't actually stop leading. That's exactly right. <laughs> so um so I, I just put it as this note. This is kind of an old preacher statement. Like there, there's a world of difference between having thick skin and a hard heart. There you go. But understanding that difference is hard. The thick skin that that I'm not I'm not just bloody every single time something comes my way. But the hard heart being I'm so closed off that I can't see what I need to see and hear what I need to hear. So I want to give you just a couple tips. This doesn't solve the problem. Okay, we could probably do an entire series on staying in leadership without becoming a sociopath. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I just want to give you a couple tips for today, and hopefully this is helpful. Um, first one is this, is no, you're going to get hit. <laughs> no, you're going to get hit. Um, I'm going to use this as a metaphor just for this section, then we're going to leave it behind. When the wide receiver runs across the middle of the field and the quarterback throws in the ball, he knows he's going to get hit. Hard. Hard. Yes. Like, there is no belief whatsoever. Like, I'm going to run a route across the middle. Everything is going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is going to go well. Leadership is the same way. No, you're going to get hit. No, that the price of impact is criticism. But this becomes the difficult thing. Is you have to know you're going to get hit. But if you're bracing for the hit, you're not going to catch the ball. Yep. So let me say it as like, you have to know that you're going to get criticism. But if you lead with a hyper awareness of that criticism, you're not going to do what you should do in leadership. Whether it is bracing for it that you don't want it to hurt, bracing for it that you're not going to care about it in advance. Like you have to know you're going to get hit without bracing for the hit. Because then you can't do what you need to do. I think that, yeah, oh, I think that's so good. I mean, because if, you, if you're if you going into this decision knowing that you're going to get hit, you'll be thinking about the hit the whole time. Even if you catch the ball, you're not going to make the play that you were supposed to make anyway. Yes. Yeah. And so it's just like this. I don't want people who – man, my, my goal today is for is for young leaders who think everyone's going to be happy with them. Yeah. And for seasoned leaders, those who have been in the game for a little bit, who are starting to become a little jaded, yeah, who are starting to become overly cynical, and, and to say, man, on either side, I, I just want you to know, and we've talked about this at yeah, length. Absolutely. We, we've said this, like, this is why we need leaders, because situations are bad. If there weren't any problems, we wouldn't need any leaders. But to know, even when you do the right thing, you will not have a 100% approval rating. And so the criticism's going to come. You better know it's coming, but you can't allow it to change how you lead. Yeah, that's great. You're going to get hit. Still catch the ball. Uh, second tip. I've only got three for you today. And then at some point in time, man, I say this seriously, as this is one of those episodes, we would love your feedback, your thoughts, what you're dealing with. Maybe it'll help us build other content out around this, or if nothing else, it'll just kind of help shape our perspective on that's this good. situation to begin with. So second tip is anticipate the reasonable response. This is, I, I think this is the most important one. Anticipate the reasonable response. So you change something. You make a decision. What will the reasonable person, how, how will they respond? Um, la last week we talked about our decision yeah. uh, to, to move and uh, just follow the call of God on our lives. And so, so I looked at that and I go, what's the reasonable response? Confusion, sadness, and shock. Yep. Ticked off? No, that's not the reasonable response. Right. Thrilled and celebrating? No, nope. that's not the reasonable response. And so this is what happens is when I know what the reasonable response is, like, first off, I'm not, I'm not thrown off when people aren't thrilled. Like, if you change something, <laughs> say it like this, so many people. <laughs> we talked about this years, a while ago that we we unveiled this new app that we wanted everyone on our team to have that yeah. would help us have more effective one-on-one -on -one meetings. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, one of the results is like, uh, people are kind of complaining about it. Of course they're going to complain about it. Right. That is the reasonable response. That is, right. Um, my uh, mortgage broker just sent me an email that I need to download an app to make the mortgage process better. Yeah. My response is not, yeah, 
Jeff Morgan <laughs> Jeff on my phone. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Like, Taking the day off. Yeah, of course not. Like, I'll just go, oh, uh, and now I've got to do this. That's a reasonable response. That's okay. Right. And I, I think that helps us set expectations Good. as to we're not expecting people to celebrate. Every decision that we make so the people-pleasing side isn't throwing us off. But that is as important for the other side to say. Knowing the reasonable response helps us understand which reactions we need to discount. And I know that sounds cynical and that sounds jaded. But just because someone has an emotional reaction to something that you did doesn't mean that you have to own their emotional reaction. That is their reaction. And when you're prepped to say, this is the reasonable response to this situation to this decision, to this change, then you know, okay, I, I'm not expecting people to do this, and the people who do this probably shouldn't get my time. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things we're talking through is the staff right now, which this should come out, um, yeah, this should come out a time in which this is appropriate, is I, I described it like this. I said, um, the decision that for, for us right here that like your pastor and different people on your staff are leaving, which for many people is like, people who they rely on, uh, part of the consistency of their life that they enjoy and is a support system for them. I say it's kind of like a Jenga piece. Yeah. I say, like, you got three in a stack. If you remove one and the whole tower comes tumbling down, you better be sure that one or two of the other blocks are missing. And so what I describe to them is say, like, hey, when we announce that we're leaving, the people who – people are sad. People are upset. I'm very – like – I'm sad too. Who are we? I'm, yeah. yeah. It, because those relationships are close and they're meaningful. But my tower didn't crumble. And for people who the, it felt like their whole life was crumbling, I said, there's other missing pieces. Yeah. Like something else is going on in their life. Ask them. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. So I would say that as like, know the reasonable, anticipate the reasonable response that helps you deal with those kind of more extreme cases in a much healthier way. It helps you pastor it better. It helps you ignore some better, anticipate the reasonable response. And then the third thing I, I just want to say is this, is stay connected to the struggle. Stay connected to the criticism. I know that sounds ridiculous. So many people want to isolate themselves from the criticism, but, but you have to stay connected relationally. Uh, otherwise, you become dispassionate. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you lose all empathy and you have to stay in the conversations even when the conversations are difficult and hard. And and I would say this for any leader, okay? And to say it as like we view pastor as a position, as a role. Pastoring is also a skill. Yep. It is walking with people through difficult seasons, not ascribing all your beliefs and feelings upon them, but helping them come out better on the other side. In, in many ways, uh, what we have negatively done is this role of pastoring relationally, we've, um, I don't know how to say it, we've intellectualized it, and so we've just pushed it off and outsourced it to counselors and said only counselors can do that. Hear me clearly, I am I'm not degrading the role and importance of counselors in our lives. But I do believe also this, that a lot of what can be healed relationally, we're not involved with because we don't want to feel those difficult emotions. Everyone who goes through a loss doesn't have to go to counseling. Sometimes they need a couple close friends just to walk with them. Some people people who go through grieving, a change, something different. They don't always need, I'm saying they can go to counseling, hear me clearly, don't don't soundbite me on this. Okay? They can, and some of them really need to, but not everyone does. And sometimes you just have to stay connected to the struggle. So if you're a leader, I think the danger is far more that you become a sociopath yep. than you just get bruised and battered every day. And so for the person who isn't as empathetic and their their battle scars, they're now proud of and they don't hurt by anything anymore. I would say, man, stay connected to the struggle. Whoever you are, stay connected in the struggle. I, I think it's funny that you you named this staying in leadership without becoming a sociopath because you're in, it, it makes sense, right? Because you, if you stay in leadership, you have because yes. if you're not in leadership, you just quit. Like yep. You're just done. And the fact of the matter is, is that the price of impact is criticism. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you said uh, something there interesting, and I, I love this this last part that stay connected to the struggle. I think if you're going to be a, a pastor or a leader, that you are in the uh, development of people. Yes. 
And so if you're not going to stay connected to the structure, how would you ever develop them? Yep. I mean, how would you? Yep. So that's a great piece, right? Now, I think uh, the know you're going to get hit piece and anticipate the response, uh, the reasonable response is great because now you know how yeah. to stay connected to the struggle. Yeah. And I think that's so clear uh, because we know that there are going to be people that are going to have um, – they're all over the board when you make a decision, in, with, especially when it comes to change. Yeah. And to know how to address each one individually. But like you said, the Jenga pieces, I think that is so clear. We've seen it already mm -hmm. um, with some people. And that's that's really the thing. You know, take them, especially when they're around other people and they're voicing, because a lot of times they feel like a, a lot more courageous when they're around more people. Yeah. To voice things that may not actually be what the actual thing is. If you get them out of that environment, and take them one on one and speak to them. You'll actually uncover, pull back the covers, and uncover so what's good. actually going on. And when you do that, you'll actually you may not you might not fix it. And the goal isn't always to fix everything. Yeah. Who did we say we are the? You know, Jesus fixes everything, not yeah. me. Yeah, not me. Right. Uh, point people to Him. You know, and that's the, that's how things get fixed. That's uh, good. Be. But at the end of the day, I think it's so important that we make sure that we meet people where they are and not leave them there. Yeah, absolutely. So. I think it is like I, I know the title of this sounds ridiculous, like staying in leadership mm -hmm. without becoming a sociopath. But like this is like the honest question I have to wrestle with from time to time, because sometimes like I'll, I'll get criticism. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Because I've had it before yeah. and I've heard it a hundred times and I have to go, should it hurt? Like should that that's like the yeah. deficit, and I know some people you're not there at all. And my guess is you're much younger in leadership, or you haven't made. I don't mean this as a criticism, but you probably haven't made the bold decisions that you needed to make at some point in time that would levy that criticism. Yeah, because but like I've had to be in spots where people are like, oh, they said this, they said this, and they're like, are you doing okay? And I'm like, yeah. And then I'm thinking, should I be doing this okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or should I be more connected to the struggle? And it's a balance. And there's been seasons in which I've been, I know this sounds crazy. There's been seasons in which I have been more open than I should have been. Yeah. And there's also been seasons in which I've been more closed than I should have been. What have you done in order to get back to that middle ground? What are you doing actively to, to make sure that you're not so closed off or you're not completely open to everyone? Um, I know this sounds uh, – I, I think in things in terms of paradigms. Yeah. Like I – like thinking things in terms of blueprints, stuff like that. That's yep. how my mind works. I'm aware of this paradigm. And so just the awareness of this helps me evaluate the criticism that I'm receiving and to understand. Yeah. So I would say like, I've never put it down on paper like this, but it's been my functional mental model for some time. And that helps you, you know, define what your next step is. Yeah. That's good. And so I go, there's some, man, uh, we had some letters that I got about a year ago. Yeah. Uh, one of them, was healthy and helpful. The yeah. other one was mean and bitter. Right. And because I knew this paradigm, I could discount the mean and bitter one and read closely the healthy and helpful one. And that's what I think is so important that you're able to discern those things. Because if you can't, you're going to be stuck reading hate mail or yeah. or great mail. Uh, you know what I mean? And you have to be able to, to, to discern those to move forward and to lead because the people that you're leading depend on you making the right decision. If I can give just like a shortcut on this, yeah. if you don't know where you are, when you get criticism... Talk to someone who's trusted. That's not, good. Not someone who just loves you, yeah. but someone who you trust and say, should I care about this? Yeah, that's great. And it, some people say, oh, no, you can learn something from every bit of criticism. Yeah. That those people don't lead. Uh, explain real quick. I think that's really important, Pete. Explain, and we only have a few minutes here. Uh, the difference between just putting that in front of someone you that loves you versus someone that loves you and that you trust to give honest feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like if I say, uh, no offense, mom. If I say, mom, should I care about this? Right. No. Right. But that's not that's not helpful. Right. It's loving. It right. feels good. Yeah. But it's not helpful and it's making me better. So it's someone whose perspective I trust. Yeah. And again, I really want to say this. Some people say, oh, no, you can learn something from every criticism. You can learn how to become cynical and jaded and mean and heartless from some of them. Yeah. And so you need to learn how to discount them. Yeah, we don't want to learn that stuff. Yeah, But it's like that statement has somehow been accepted as indisputable truth, and it's stupid. That's that is uh, it is stupid. And that's it. Well, that's all we have time for today. Wrap this up for us, Kevin. If you sustain leadership, you're going to get hit. But if you lose empathy in the process, you're going to be a sociopath. You have to figure out how to stay in it without becoming a monster from it.
Don't become a monster. There we go. Thank you for joining us today and spending some time with us. If you're new to the podcast or haven't yet subscribed, it'd mean the world to us if you did that now. Also, post about it. Rate and review. You will not believe how that helps get this podcast in more leaders' hands just like you. Make sure you share it with your teams. And uh, we love hearing your stories of how the podcast is working in your life and business. If you have a story, uh, visit leadinghope.online, or you can go to Facebook and message us or Instagram and message us as well. That works just as well if that's easier for you. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you. And remember, everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Yeah.